All right, people, so what I'm gonna show you guys how to do today is how to adjust the ride height and dial in the stance of a car that's on coilovers. What I'm gonna show you guys how to work on is my 2002 GS300. Now, I've been adjusting and messing with the coils for the last few weeks now, and I'm gonna show you guys everything that I've learned to make the, your process go as easy, as smooth as possible, and make sure you nail it the first time around. Before you start removing or adjusting anything at all, what you need to do is you need to set a goal for your desired ride height and how you want your wheels to fit. Now, as you can tell, I'm here at the rear of the car, and the current fitment is, is that it's just barely tucking in the tire. However, my fit, um, my ride height is slightly different from left to right on my rear. So that's one of the things I'm personally going to be adjusting in my car today. But, so that's my, my desired stance. I want a level fitment in the rear. And I also want the whole rear and the front as well to be higher up. That way I have more clearance so I can fit larger tires in the rear, as well as have more clearance in the front. The goal varies case by case, depending on whatever you want to do with your car. But the, to get to that goal is the same for all vehicles in terms of adjusting the coils. And whatever I'm going to tell you right now fits for all vehicles, or should fit for all vehicles, at least as long as your car has a sway bar. Now for all the tools you're going to be needing in the process, it's honestly super simple. All that I use, I use a set of tire ramps, a jack, the tools you're going to be needing to adjust your coils, so the two wrenches. I also have right here a key for my lug nuts, and whatever tool you're going to be using to remove your tires all together, which I'm using an impact gun. But again, you don't need that, anything will do. And this is all you're going to need. So I'm going to get the car in the air and show you guys how to start the process. Okay, so as you can tell right here, I have the back tires on wheel ramps right now. So what I did, I just jacked up the whole car and put the wheel stands only on the back. And the purpose behind that is, is that way I can just constantly go up and down with suspension and still have a way to measure how high it is without having to put the car all the way on the ground each and every time. And at least it's closer to the level because my driveway is on um, a slope. I'm kind of out of breath right now because this shit's heavy. But um, as you can tell right here, this is my favorite right now. I'm currently sitting below the wheel, but above the rim. And the goal is I want to be able to show the entire tire in the rear and with the front, I'll adjust it to however it is. But the reason behind me wanting to go higher up is because I'm having too many issues going to driveways and such, just coming up, becoming a pain in the ass. And also I have burner tires for the rear. So when I do drift stuff, I don't have to use the nice ones. And they're significantly taller because they're stock 250Z rims. So I need to adjust this all so I can clear the stock rims and I'll be okay. So yes, but as of now, this is how it sits. And I'm gonna get it up in the air again, take off the tire, and show you guys exactly how to adjust the coils and what you need to keep in mind when you do that. All right, so here we are on the driver's side rear tire. And adjusting coils themselves is actually a remarkably simple process. However, it is also very easy to mess up. So first of all, you start off by understanding the coil over. This is the main, sh the main shock, or no? All right, so here we are on the driver's side rear of the car. Now, it's important to understand what the coilover looks like and what each, each part of it does. So this part is a spring. This part in here that goes all the way up is the main body. And right here is the lower portion of the shock that mounts to your actual lower control arm. So what you need to know is that this part right here, this little collar, is what holds the shock as, at a fixed height. And what these right here do is that they adjust the preload on the spring itself. You do not want to mess with the tension between these two. If you break these two loose, you are affecting the preload on the spring and that directly affects how your car rides, which is just something you definitely do not want to mess with. So by first off, you get the small wrench that you have and you use that to break loose. This one's a little too big, but you use it to break loose this initial collar. And you can just spin it a little bit. And then from there, you get the bigger one. And what this does is it grabs onto the collars on this. And notice, when you grab one and you spin it, they both spin at the same time. That's important. If they do don't spin at the same time, stop what you're doing, and then you need to look up another YouTube video because I don't know how to fix that. But again, you just grab it, you turn it, and that's all it takes to adjust the height of coilovers themselves. Now, something important you need to consider is that, okay, so in my case, I am raising my car about two inches in the rear, but what you need to remember is that coilovers do not raise evenly on all sides of the car. They each have a different load on them because cars actually aren't as level as you'd believe. So this shock on this side is actually considerably shorter than the coilover on the other side of the car. So what you need to remember is, is that it's also affected, well not only are the cars uneven inherently, but the sway bars themselves also affect the ride height of the car more than you'd think. Because if you raise this side of the car, it's effectively also going to affect the coil, uh, um, coilover on the other side because it's correct because they're connected via the sway bar. So if I want to raise my car two inches, I'd actually only raise this about one and a half inches, and that would also raise the other side about half an inch. And then from there, I go to the other side and raise that about an inch to an inch and a quarter, 
and then that would raise that side effectively two inches and that would the extra adjustment on that side would bring this head up also the extra half inch that you need so it's a very complicated process but once you understand it it's very easy it's a lot of just going back and measuring everything which is again why i have the car in the air and why i'm using those ramps and that's because that way i can just put the tires on put the ramps underneath lower it back onto the ramps and that'll show me how the car's sitting and in, in relativity to the fender and it's good to get a measuring tape also if you want to do that in my case i just use my fingers but again it's just a measure of going back and forth back and forth and just taking your time with it because you're not going to get this in a very short amount of time but it is possible to do it in one day and in one shot if that makes sense so again i'm gonna raise the side a little bit more and i'll show you a comparison between this side of the shock and on the other side just so you can get an idea of how much a difference can really be or inherently what you can see right here actually is the amount of droop in my arms so you can see that arms pre-level and this one's drooping considerably that's because the different values that are in the shock this one's significantly shorter than that one is even though when weights on them they are exactly the same height so again it's just weird cars are complicated an important bit of information I forgot to mention is that once you're done getting your desired height, you want to retighten this collar all the way down until it goes back to connecting with the bottom or the lower half of the shock. And what I tend to like to do is I'll lower this all the way, tighten it by hand, as you can tell there, it's tight enough by hand, and then I'll just put the wheel back on, go to the other side, adjust it accordingly, lower back on the ground, see the height, and then just keep them by hand again. So you can constantly be going back and forth. You're not struggling to undo this. But once you reach your desired height, then you go ahead, take the tires off one more time and tighten the living shit out of this because you do not want this going loose by any means necessary. Because the shocks, as they compress and expand, they're going to want to rotate a little bit. You want all the rotation to come from this part, of the this part of the shock. This thing rotates right here. That's where you want all the rotation to be from. If it's loose right here, the whole shock will rotate and effectively loosen this. It can break it loose, and then from there it can, well, it will just mess with the shock height at that point. Okay, so this is close to how the desired frame that I want. I want to put something out very specific to you guys. So as you can tell right now, it's still on the ramps in the rear and the front's hanging down. And on this side of the tire, I can very clearly put my top of the fingers through the top of the wheel well, and there's no issues, it's fine. And on the other side, however, I don't have that same convenience it's a very tight fit my fingers don't want to fit through there perfectly but I also want to point out that when the car is on the ground the tires are also gonna be affected very differently as you can tell right here the car is at a very slight angle with the ass up higher so it means the shock the shocks aren't being faced with an even load so it's still kind of offset a little bit so I guarantee you once it's on the ground it'll actually be a lot closer to even than it is right now so I'm gonna go ahead and put the back on the ground I'll show you guys how it looks so, that you, so you can get an idea of how you need to adjust your shocks and then move on to the front and then move it up a little bit okay right now i have the whole front of the car in the air but i want to take the example of the car the front of the car being in the air to show you how it affects the rear so as you can tell as you well, as you already knew the sides are adjusted very differently for right now approximately three inches from, from the top of the rim to the top of the fender and i can get an idea of how it feels and right here on this side now it's adjusted approximately three inches the sides are actually a little bit lower now and it's actually oh no it feels higher actually it's a little bit higher up so as you can tell the different spring rates or the different load on the springs affected each side differently which is why this is such a pain in the ass so my friends this side's a tiny bit lower than that side i'm gonna effectively raise this side a lot more than this side hopefully catch them up to about even rates because as, as I mentioned earlier, they're all affected differently. I want to ideally raise the ones that are way shorter, which is this one right here, raise it up, and that'll effectively raise that one. So if you were to pay attention, I actually only raised this side half an inch, and I gained almost two inches of wheel travel on this side. It doesn't make any sense how that worked. Even though like, it just it just makes sense. Cars are so stupid. I hate them, but I love them. I'm still gonna work on them. So right now I'm gonna do the exact same process I did in the rear, on the front, put it on the ground, and hopefully my car will be <laughs> tall enough now that I can go ahead and clear the, ramp, the um, my jack because I had an issue where I had to put the little block underneath it to actually get it high enough to work on it. Hopefully that's not an issue anymore. I actually want to go ahead and test fit the rear tires on the front. That way I know they're going to clear just in case. And I also have burners for the rear. I want to test fit on the rear to see how that looks. 
All right, so I think I found something interesting I'd share with you guys. So I was going ahead and adjusting the height on the coil right here, and I was aware my car rubbed. But I guess it rubbed so much that it literally stripped the paint completely off the inside right here. But it's okay though. And as you can tell, the top of my shock would smash into right there. Well, it's not my spindle, I mean, my apologies. I know people get around this by shortening the spindle. However, I don't have that much money, and I don't trust my welding skills like that. So hopefully I'll stop this bit right here. We'll stop smashing into there. And hopefully I'll get in a little bit more clearance so that way I'm not rubbing. But it's okay though. I happen to have some chassis paint lying around. So I'm gonna go ahead, shake it up a little bit. And that's plenty. And just, whew, brand new. Fuck it, that's good enough. Remember, good is too much. Good enough is always good enough. That was stupid, I don't even know why I said that. Okay, I went ahead and messed with the front. There was nothing eventful on the other side. It was literally the exact same thing. But right now, the front is just about level and the rear is just ever so slightly offset. That side over there is still lower. So I'm gonna go ahead, I actually like how this fits. Even though it's way higher than it was, it looks like a monster truck now. At least it's functional. So you can tell right here, the wheel is just slightly, like the ever so slightly bit tucked into there. This one's a little more pushed down, literally just the tiniest bit amount. So I'm probably just gonna lift this side up maybe a quarter inch. And then it should be square. And I still want to test fit the rear tires in the front just to make sure they fit. So just in case I have any to run them on the front. And then I want to test my burners in the back. So I want to test it. I want to show you guys that look actually, because I think that look pretty dope. These tires have a way higher offset than the ones in the front. So putting these in the front and my burners in the back, I think will actually have a pretty good look. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the other side, because it's the same thing. Just adjust it a little bit, make sure it doesn't go past this, and you're fine. And I'm gonna go ahead and go back to this side, and then move the tires around, so you can see the end look for when it's all drifty and stancy. It's wrapped up and the suspension's dialed in, but I wanted to show you guys the new drifty stance. So I went ahead, I put my rear tires in the front, just because they're significantly wider, or wider, and have a way higher offset. So they fit way more snug and flush, and I love it. There's the front right there. And my burners, which as some of you might see from the Nissan logo right in the middle, these are actually just bone stock 350Z rims. But combined, that ain't too bad. I mean, the rears are ugly. I'm gonna paint them. I'm thinking of painting them white. Oh, one, I have seven tires actually. I bought them for cheap. So I bought, I'm gonna paint one set white, one set, was Kim Silver, one set I might paint teal. I actually like that like color combo will look. And then the other one's gonna be a spare tire. But yeah, this is the drifty stance. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up after this because I just want to see how this looks. And I actually tested it out already. I'm monster trucking a whole lot. But I think what will fix the stance is I'm gonna go ahead and get a front lip. So hopefully that'll help make the front look a little bit lower and get rid of the monster truckiness of it. But I mean like it's pure function right now. I mean it's not even that bad. Being as opposed to when it was slammed, it was a it was a pain in the ass to drive when it was slammed. Like genuinely a huge pain in the ass. Everything was just like an obstacle. And now you can't even tell that it's not much taller. Just because I mean no one fucking gives a shit when your car slammed, to be honest. But um I mean I'm really fucking with it. I don't know if you guys do as much as I do. Comment down below what you think colors or what colors you think they should be. And what you think of the overall drifty stance altogether. Cause I'm really loving it right now. I mean like look at that pretty ass little bitch. That's it for today's video. If you guys liked it, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the channel and all the good shit. Follow along for more content. I'm following along with this trans this drift limousine build that I had got going on. But yeah, I'm kind of tired, so as you can tell, I'm kind of lost for words right now. But uh, that's it. Follow, like, like, subscribe down below, which I already said. <laughs> I'm so fucking tired. But yeah, have a good day. Stay safe. Wear your mask and don't die. So deuces, bitch.